fourth project kickstart tutorial where we'll learn how to use the Gantt chart to manage a project's timeline. We continue with the project kickstart online tutorials project from the previous lessons. The main purpose of the Gantt chart is to present the project's timeline visually as we see here on the right. First we notice that all of these tasks are one day in length. This is just project kickstart's default duration. These task durations and start dates are 90% of what planners will edit here. We can use the project scaling feature here to change days to weeks to get a better view of the task bars. Now one way to change the task durations and dates of each task is here in these three columns. Double clicking on the days field will open up to editing. Double clicking on any of the dates will bring up a handy calendar for date editing. However, the easiest way to change dates and durations is on the Gantt chart itself. Hold the mouse button down on the finish date and make it longer or make it shorter. Hold the mouse down on the start date and make it sooner or make it later. Hold the mouse button down in the middle of the task and slide it left or slide it right. This is how the plan appears after adjusting all of the task dates and durations. The scale has been set to weeks to show more of the plan. Zooming in at the days scale, we can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days will pass before this task is completed, even though here it shows that it's a five-day task. It happens to fall over a weekend, which Project Kickstart automatically takes into account. It's very important for planners to understand the difference between working time and elapsed time in order to make good time estimates. Working time here is the five days that people will work on this task. Elapsed time is the seven calendar days that will pass while the task is worked on. Here is a three-day task that starts on a Wednesday and, as expected, finishes on a Friday. Working time and elapsed time are both three days. Here is another three-day task, like the example we saw before, that starts on a Thursday and ends on a Monday because it spells a weekend. In this case, however, the planner might reasonably think that if people will come into work on Saturday, they can start a new task on Monday. Clicking on this icon brings up a calendar that allows the user to change working and non-working days. We'll change the 17th to a working day just by clicking on it. And now the task is done in three days. Planners also use the project calendar to change holidays into non-working days. Here is an example of a three-day task that requires seven elapsed calendar days to complete. This task starts on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, but the planner knows that many in the company will take the following Friday off, so he also made Friday on working day. Not because it's an official holiday, but because the planner knows from experience that people are not very productive on the day after a feast. Source availability plays a critical role in elapsed days. Here is a three-day task that requires 13 calendar days. In this case, the person assigned to the task is an intern who only works half days. The planner knows that a three-day task with a half-time resource will take six days to complete. But the planner also realizes that the intern is not very experienced, so he wisely allows a seventh day for this task. Unfortunately, this task starts on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and the intern is taking Friday off. After the four-day holiday weekend, the intern returns to work Monday through Friday, then there is another weekend, and this three-day task finishes 13 days after it started. This brings us to the number one benefit of the Gantt chart, the ability to replan. This task will take too long according to this, but the Gantt chart has provided an insight for action. Perhaps a full-time experienced person needs to be assigned to this task. Maybe requirements of earlier tasks can be scaled back so this task can start and finish before the holiday. Maybe a second resource who will work on the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving can help the intern. These are a few of the many alternatives open to the planner, but the point is that the planner wouldn't even know he had a problem to solve without a Gantt chart to review. 
In practice, planners will review the entire Gantt chart to make adjustments that will save time and ultimately money. We have learned about Project Kickstart as a planning tool. Now, returning to the online tutorials plan, we can learn more about how to use it as a project tracking tool. Project Kickstart can track time here in the percent done column. It can track costs here in the cost column. It was originally estimated that develop the first tutorial as a test would require five days and five hundred dollars of the consultant's time. Percent done is zero, indicating the task hasn't started yet. Later, it turned out that five days had passed, but quality had become more of an issue than anticipated, and as a result, the task was half complete. The planner clicked on the icon to bring up the task information box in order to make revisions. Percent done was updated to 50%, and the cost and time estimates were doubled. A note was also added to explain why the changes were made. Click OK, and we see that the changes are now reflected in the plan. The days have doubled, the percent done is 50, the cost is $1,000, and there's now a bar within the task bar to show percent complete. The ability to modify any task in this way demonstrates how Project Kickstart functions seamlessly as a project planning and a project tracking tool. Milestones and the color of the taskbars are two final Gantt chart features that can be helpful in planning and tracking. Tasks have durations, so they are spans of time. Milestones have zero duration, so they are points in time. Here is a task identified as sign the contract, but signing a contract will not require one full day. It's really a milestone. So the planner can change this to zero. And now a diamond appears to indicate that in fact this is a milestone. Blue and black are the default colors of Project Kickstart's tasks and phases. Planners can find several uses for changing these colors using this icon. This plan, for example, has four important tasks that require PKS testers. We can highlight these tasks here, 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 and here out of the color palette, change them to purple, and now they really stand out in the plan. Now, Borrowing from the colors of a traffic signal, the planner has used green to indicate that this phase is complete. This phase is still in black, but there are tasks under it that have been completed in R green. This task is yellow to show that it is a task in progress, but it's falling behind, and this task, which is in red, is likely to suffer. The uses of color particularly for task tracking, are limited only to the planner's imagination. We have seen how to use the Gantt chart to plan and track time, percent done, and costs. We have also seen how to add milestones and color to convey additional information. Here, in the File menu, are commands for printing task reports and for printing Gantt chart reports. And here, in the lower right-hand corner, are options for exporting this plan to other programs. We'll learn more about these features and Project Kickstart's uses as a communications tool in the next tutorial.